Contained in these pages are my observations of the bizarre creatures that have appeared on Carnate Island since the cataclysm struck. The creatures emerge in a variety of ways, but many of them appear to come from within the island itself, as if the very earth of Carnate were poisonous and vile. Though I scarcely have time to keep a journal like this while trying to keep myself alive, my inquisitive nature forces me to write down what I see in the hope that I might better understand it. But how can this unspeakable horror possibly be understood? It is as if Carnet's horrific sins, both past and present, are being brought to life in a pageant of death. Slayer. I first witnessed these creatures jumping out of the ground itself. Their heads were detached from their torsos held aloft by hideous contraptions. Their limbs have been replaced by blades of the sharpest steel. To my eyes, they appear to be a manifestation of decapitation. Yet it seems improbable anyone ever had their head chopped off an abbot. I suppose uncarnate anything is possible. I have dubbed these monstrosities slayers. Marksman. Based on the battery of rifles attached to its back and the blindfold around its head, this marksman appears to be the reincarnation of a military firing squad. Abbott was originally a POW camp during World War II, so it seems likely they would have had executions of that sort. Indeed, there are stories of a rogue colonel who was to be court-martialed but instead took his own life. Perhaps he is connected to these abominations. Mainliner. In the 1970s, lethal injection was introduced as the most humane means of state-sanctioned killing. To date, 25 such procedures have taken place in Abbott. This creature, I call him the Mainliner, appears to suffer with every move he makes. Perhaps the mixture of sodium pentothal, pancoronium bromide, and potassium chloride in his veins is not to his liking. The numerous needles jabbed into his body cannot help his disposition. Nooseman. Not only is this nooseman dead from being hung by the neck, but he also appears to have had his skin removed. I wonder if these creatures are tied to the legendary story of the inmates who, outraged by the death of fellow workers in a quarry mining accident, hung and skinned five COs. The noosemen are more supernatural than many of their brethren, ripping themselves straight out of the ceiling in some entirely impossible manner. Burrower. These burrowers are some of the most lethal creatures I have encountered, primarily due to their ability to spring forth from the ground itself and just as quickly resubmerge. They're closely tied to the very soil of Carnate a theme among these monstrosities. Its appearance is of a human body tied up in a gunny sack and constrained by leather straps, with deadly steel chains attached to various locations. I believe they represent those buried alive. Fester. Continually emerging from the slave ship, these are the festering creatures who foil my attempts to escape this confounded rock. Rats live within their flesh, writhing within it and then springing forth randomly. They appear to be a reincarnation, not of the slaves, for then they would be of darker skin tone, but instead of the slave traders. In this form, they are forced to live out again and again the fate they forced upon those hapless slaves. Inferno. From what I have witnessed, this manifestation of evil appears to have two distinct forms. The first, a young girl in Puritan dress, perhaps 13 years of age. This transforms into an altogether more disturbing flaming creature. Both clutch a small handmade doll. To my mind, there is no doubt that these creatures are tied to the three young girls who made witchcraft accusations in the late 1600s and led to the incendiary death of eleven innocents. <laughs> Dr. Killjoy One of Abbott's most persistent legends tells of Dr. Killjoy, 
the quite insane psychiatrist surgeon who ran an asylum on Carnate. Doing research of my own, I found that he did indeed exist, though which stories are true and which are fabrication is anyone's guess. Since the cataclysm, I have three times seen a surgeon formed of pure light, reminiscent of 16 millimeter film projection come to life. Could this be the fine doctor? Horace. Many inmates break once inside Abbott, but none have snapped more extremely than Horace Gage, who, the tale goes, became convinced his wife wasn't safe without his protection and sliced her to ribbons during a conjugal visit. He ended up in the mercy chair, electrocuted by Abbott's then-executioner Hermes Haight. For years, inmates have said he haunts Abbott, and I believe I saw him ten minutes ago. I surely wish I had not. Hermes Since the cataclysm, I have several times found myself mysteriously surrounded by noxious green fumes. I have fled in each case, and I think if I had not, I might not be alive to write this now. Within the gas, I have seen a humanoid who seemed to take great joy in the prospect of my death. Could this be Hermes, Abbott's resident executioner for several decades? If I recall, he took his own life in the gas chamber. I only briefly saw this enormous creature a single time, near the docks. I cannot even begin to describe him, save for one thing. He seems to be quite literally connected to an inmate, the convicted killer, Torque. Incredible as it may sound, this creature appears to have a miniature version of Torque attached to him via a long umbilicus. Beyond that, I can only say that I view him as the most evil of all the creatures, a pure manifestation of fury and hatred. Torque's family. In one of my other entries, I discuss Torque the notorious inmate who seems at ease dispatching these creatures. I recall seeing in the sun a picture of the man's ex-wife and two boys, and I have drawn it here from memory. I remember they were a beautiful family, and it seems unbelievable that any man so blessed would have the audacity to kill them so savagely. But as we all know, beauty alone is often not enough. Talk. Since the cataclysm, I have seen the death of many inmates. But one seems to be an unstoppable survivor. I've seen him take out packs of marksmen and slayers without even breathing hard. Tork is an inmate of some ill repute, having been sentenced to die for the killing of his ex-wife and children. Of course, being convicted and being guilty are two different things. Perhaps he will save us all, but I feel certain he will at least save himself. The Creature I saw this creature in a dream, and he seems somehow connected to these horrific events. In my dream, I witnessed the inmate Torque transform into this beast and lay waste to all around him. Since the cataclysm, I have seen Tork go berserk, killing beasts with his bare hands. But of course, during such times, he himself does not actually transform into a beast. He merely becomes intensely enraged. The meaning of my dream, I leave for the reader to discern. When Ernesto took his job at Abbott, I was far from excited. When he told me we would need to move to Carnate Island as well, I was not happy at all. But I tried to find a good side to the situation. I have always been interested in the history of unique places. What kind of history would we find on Carnate? This scrapbook project was started primarily to fill my time here, but also so I could record what I had discovered. In my exploration of the island, I uncovered many of Carnate's secrets. Though I record them here, I do not think I will tell the world about what I have found. Carnate is a place whose secrets are best kept to itself. 
The island. Carnate Island is approximately three miles wide and lies some 10 miles off the coast of Maryland. In addition to man-made structures, Carnate is also home to a labyrinthine natural cave system unlike anything I have seen before. Through my studies, I learned of the island's dark and unsettling history. Though it may sound ridiculous to say it, Carnate seems to bring out the worst in those who make the mistake of coming here. Abbott State Penitentiary Originally built as part of Fort Mallison to house German POWs during World War II, it was taken over by Maryland following the war and converted into Abbott State Penitentiary. Mostly built out of local quarry rock, the prison is now home to nearly 1,000 inmates and has the worst safety record and highest homicide rate of any prison in the Maryland Department of Corrections system. The state also carries out the majority of its death sentences here. The Death House The most ominous structure inside of Abbott is the Death House. Electrocution, gas, and lethal injection have all been used within its walls, though only the last is still used today. The Death House is also the prison's oldest structure, built as the administration building when the prison was a POW camp. Its basement was also built during the war, and in it, you can still see relics of that time. The basement has been closed off for 20 years. Prison Cemetery When an inmate dies and his family does not claim the body, he is buried here. The cemetery is named after the infamous corrections officer Hermes T. Haight. He was in charge of executions for several decades before finally killing himself in the gas chamber. Also buried here is notorious inmate Horace Gage, who savagely killed his wife on a conjugal visit. To me, the cemetery is the most bleak and depressing place on all of Carnate. The Quarry At the same time the prison started operation, digging commenced at Carnate Quarry. Prisoners were forced to work this quarry for 12 hours a day, cutting the rock that would be used to build the prison walls. Work conditions in the quarry were far from ideal. Inmates who complained were severely disciplined. Carnate Quarry has not been in use since the 1960s, with its mining equipment simply abandoned where it stood to rust and collapse. Caving. At some point in the mid-50s, Weak mineshaft support beams gave way and trapped a number of quarry workers under several tons of rubble. The official story was that the prisoners were killed instantly. Other inmates maintained that the workers survived the collapse, but no attempt was made to rescue them. The inmates were so enraged, they revolted against the COs and lynched five of them. What really happened may never be known. The Asylum on the far western edge of Carnate stands an old Victorian home built in 1877. In 1899, the home was converted into the oddly titled Carnate Institution for the Alienated. This small institution was run by one Dr. Killjoy, whose methods were far from conventional and often tragically lethal. What exactly happened to Dr. Killjoy is unknown, but the asylum was abandoned in the 1930s and has been uninhabited ever since. Burned House Though I know little about this site, these ruins of an old home are oddly fascinating to me. The small house appears to be from the mid-19th century, and I would say it certainly predates the asylum. Nearby is an old abandoned well that seems to be especially deep. Since the house burned down, one cannot help but wonder if Carnate itself was trying to drive away the people who lived inside it, if one chooses to believe in such things. Slave Shipwreck On the northwestern beach of the island is a massive shipwreck from the early 18th century. The ship carried a cargo of slaves and was en route to Norfolk when it was knocked off course and crashed. Apparently, the traders feared releasing the slaves they carried and instead left them trapped in the hull where they were slowly eaten by rats. How the ship has survived the elements nearly three centuries is certainly a mystery. The Bluff On the south side of the island near Fort Mallison, there is a bluff which appears to have been forgotten since the 1940s. 
Along the ocean side of the bluff are three wood posts riddled with bullets to which dead bodies are still attached. This seems to be the site of the little-known 1944 execution of three American soldiers, executed on suspicion of treason. No actual evidence of wrongdoing was ever found. Crashed plane. This bizarre relic is a Horton 229A1, an experimental plane developed by the Germans during the latter stages of World War II. It crashed on Carnate in 1944, to the great distress of the fort's colonel. Taking his cue from the Japanese internment camps of the West, the colonel wanted to root out the traitors he suspected had led the plane to Carnate. He executed three of his own men who happened to be of German ancestry, but who were almost certainly innocent. Why the plane actually crashed here remains a mystery. World War II Fort Built in 1942, Fort Malison served as both coastal defense facility and POW camp. The fort had some 250 men and held approximately 1,000 prisoners. The fort's most notorious story is of its colonel, who executed three of his men for treason because a German airplane crashed on the island. A subsequent court-martial found no evidence to justify these executions, and the colonel ended up taking his own life. Old Cemetery This cemetery is home to the remains of 11 Puritans who were accused of witchcraft and burned at the stake in 1681. Witch burning was all but unheard of on this continent, with other suspected witches, such as those in Salem, having met their demise at the end of a rope. It appears that hanging was not enough for the residents of Goodsmouth, no doubt because Carnate Island is a place that drives people to extremes. Burning Site in the 17th century, Carnate was home to a small Puritan village named Goodsmouth. In 1681, for unknown reasons, a 13-year-old girl accused several townsfolk of witchcraft. Joined by two close friends of hers, the trio formed an unholy alliance, which led to the burning of 11 people, all of whom are interred nearby. Shortly thereafter, the girls mysteriously disappeared. This is the place where those terrible burnings occurred. The Lighthouse The lighthouse is the oldest standing structure on Carnate Island. Its cornerstone states its date of construction as 1834. The light was originally oil-powered, but since the 1950s has run off of a nearby generator. Similarly, the lighthouse's rotation was originally powered by a system of gears that would periodically need to be re-cranked. To this day, when the power goes off, the motion needs to be restarted by hand cranking. The town. Built on the site of the Puritan village of Goodsmouth, this town is home to nearly 30 corrections officers and their families. It has a single dilapidated general store, a small overgrown park, and a church that for as long as anyone can remember has had no minister. It is generally agreed that no one would live in this depressing place were it not for the daunting distance back to the mainland and lack of ferry service. The docks. The only functional dock remaining on Carnate, this is the sole point of entry for inmates and their visitors, as well as corrections officers, and those of us who happen to be married to them. I remember the first day I came to Carnate. It was raining in sheets and the ship had trouble docking. I remember thinking the island didn't want us coming here. I've long thought it would have been better if we had turned back then. <laughs>